In this video, I want to cover a topic found in the college algebra club called inverse functions. By the end of this video, you will know what an inverse function is and how to find the inverse function. Let's get started. So what is an inverse function? So an inverse function reverses another function. Basically, its coordinate points are flipped. And the main function and the inverse function are mirror images of each other about the y equals x line. So if I have one function where I have x and f of x, if I have points 1, 3, 5, and 7 for my x values and the corresponding f of x or y value will be negative 4, 2, 8, and 14. Now my inverse function, what we denote it as f of negative 1 of x, that's a notation for our inverse function. If I had negative 4, 2, 8, and 14, these would be the opposite of what you see in the main function. So if I input a negative 4, I'll get out a 1. If I input a 2, I'll get out a 3. If I input an 8, I'll get a 5. And if I input 14, I'll get 7. So these are the x and y values are switched in both of these. So if I were to plug in 1 into f of x, I will get negative 4. And if I were to plug in negative 4 into the inverse function, I will get 1. So we can basically see that it reverses what the f of x function did. I plugged in 1, f of x, I get negative 4. If I plug that result into the inverse function, I get back out what I started with, the 1. Now if we look at the graph of those two functions, f of x and the inverse function, we can see that this is f of x here, the inverse function here. So look at the point 3, 2. 3, 2 here, that's one point on the f of x function. Now the point 2, 3 is on the inverse function. So we see those coordinates are swapped. 3, 2 versus 2, 3. And these two lines, the red and blue, are symmetrical around the y equals x line, which basically goes through here at a 45 degree angle. So we can see, you know, these two points are swapped. And that's going to be the same thing throughout these. The x and y coordinates are going to be swapped. And the resulting functions are graphs. Those are mirror images about the y equals x line. Now, a requirement for the main function is it has to be a one-to-one -one function. And what does that mean? So each y value has to have only one x value paired with it. Okay. And you can test this by doing the horizontal line test. So if there is a spot where you can draw a horizontal line and hit two spots on the graph, it is not a one-to-one -one function. Okay. If I try it on this one, now I'm going to hit one spot at a time. So this is going to be a one-to-one -one function. All right, so remember the main function has to pass the horizontal line test. So how do we actually find the inverse function? What we do here is basically swap the x and y variables and then isolate the y. So if I have f of x equals 3x minus 7, this is our main function. You know, I can also write it as y equals 3x minus 7. Now I'm going to swap the x and y. So x equals 3y minus 7. So now I want to isolate the y, so I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So I get x plus 7 equals 3y. And then I want to divide both sides by 3. So I have just a y here. And then the quantity x plus 7 all over 3. Alright, so that's going to be our inverse function. We write like this in inverse notation. So x plus 7 over 3. 
Okay, so I plug in one value in the f of x function, get the result. Take that result and put it in the inverse function, I get back what I originally put in the f of x function. So it reverses what the main function did. So now I'm going to go over some problems that you might find on the college algebra club. So this one says if f of x is equal to 7 minus 3x to the third power, and f to the negative 1 denotes the inverse function of f, the inverse function of f is equal to what? Okay, so again, we can write the original as y equals 7 minus 3x to the third power. Then I want to swap x and y. So we get x is equal to 7 minus 3y to the third power. Here I want to subtract 7 from both sides. So I get x minus 7 is equal to negative 3 y to the third. And what I'm going to do here is multiply both sides by negative 1. So I get negative x plus 7 so to 3 y to the third. Then divide both sides by 3. So I have negative x plus 7 over 3 equal to y to the third power. So how do we get the y by itself here? We need to do the reverse. So we're cubing it right now. So we gotta take the third root of both sides. Okay, then we get y and the third root. And I'm just gonna write it seven minus x and just switch the seven and x value all over three. Then I can change the y to the you know inverse function notation and the third root of seven minus x over three. So remember to find the inverse function, switch the x and y values and get the y by itself, and that'll be the inverse function. This problem says a company's daily cost C in hundreds of dollars to manufacture n items of a certain product can be modeled by the function c of n. According to the model, what is the interpretation of the inverse function of 10 equal 170? When c to the negative 1 is the inverse of c. Now if we were to write c of n, using those numbers would be c of n or c of 170 will equal 10. Basically your n would be here. So this would be corresponding to 170 items. And the cost would be 10, and this is in hundreds, so 10 times 100 or 1,000. So the cost to produce 170 items will be $1,000. So to put this in the context of the problem, it would be the company's daily cost to manufacture 170 items of the product is $1,000. All right, so for another college algebra clip problem, this says f of x is equal to x squared for x is less than or equal to zero, and ax plus b for x is greater than zero. So that's a piecewise function. So the function f above has an inverse function for which of the following values of a and b. Now, if we were to try to graph this, you know, x squared is a parabola, and we're only looking at the you know, left side, greater less than zero. Normally, you know, x squared would go right through the origin like that. So we just want the left side. So remember, our main function has to pass the horizontal line test. So that basically means we can't have anything above the x-axis, because when we do our horizontal line test, we'll hit something over there and hit two spots in the graph. So we can't have anything over here. And we also know that ax plus b is gonna be a line, because our highest exponent is a one on the x there. Now if we look at our b is our y-intercept. So it can't be positive because it'll end up failing the horizontal line test. So it has to be less than zero. Now if I look at each of these answers, it'd be 
If a is negative 1, that gives me negative x minus 3 for line. B would give me negative x plus 3. And these are y equal for the line. And for C, our A would be 0, leaving just y equals negative 1. And then D would be y equals x minus 3. And E would be y equals x plus 3. Now we know our y-intercept has to be less than 0 in order for this to work. So basically that has to be, look at our answer choices, negative 3. And our slope would need to be negative going down and away from our other graph of x squared. And we can't have this going up because that will cause our you know, horizontal line test to fail. So this means our B value has to be negative and our A value has to be negative to give us a negative slope. So A will have to be the correct answer. All right, I want to thank you for watching this video. You should know what an inverse function is and how to find the inverse function. Thanks for watching.